Welcome to Infection Control Part 1. Why is infection control important in salons, spas, and barbershops? Infection control in salons, spas, and barbershops is not necessarily a life or death issue, but has become a vital necessity due to the outbreak of a variety of infections that can be spread from one human to another. So let's start with our quote. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Understanding the basics of cleaning and disinfecting and following federal and state rules will safeguard you and your clients and ensure that you have a long and successful career in the beauty industry. So let's take a look at infection control starting with agencies. State boards and other regulatory agencies require that infection control measures safe work practices be applied while serving the public. Infection control refers to the methods used to eliminate or reduce the transmission of infectious organisms from one individual to another. Safe work practices require implements, tools, and equipment be used safely and you be aware of situations that can cause accidents. You are responsible for employing safe work practices to help prevent accidents and injuries from occurring in the workplace. Let's take a look at our infection control vocabulary, starting with the first term, cleaning. Cleaning is a mechanical process using soap and water or detergent and water to remove all visible dirt, debris, and many disease-causing germs. Sanitizing is a chemical process for reducing the number of disease-causing germs on clean surfaces to a safe level. Disinfecting is a chemical process for use with non-porous items that uses specific products to destroy harmful organisms, including bacteria, viruses, and fungi, except bacterial spores, on implements and environmental surfaces. Sterilizing is the process that destroys all microbial life, including spores, with use of an autoclave. Federal agencies, starting with OSHA. OSHA stands for Occupational Safety and Health Administration. OSHA was created to regulate and enforce safety and health standards to protect employees in the workplace, address issues relating to the handling, mixing, storing, and disposing of products, general safety in the workplace, and your right to know about any potentially hazardous ingredients contained in the products and how to avoid these hazards. EPA, which stands for Environmental Protection Agency, not the EPA that you use to spray in the schools on the clinic floor and in the classroom, but EPA stands for Environmental Protection Agency. They register all types of disinfectant sold and used in the United States. The number certifies the disinfectant when used correctly will be effective against pathogens listed on the label. Disinfectants are not listed as hospital grade. I repeat, disinfectants are not listed as hospital grade. Standard precautions are guidelines published by the CDC, which stands for Center of Disease Control, that requires the employer and employee to assume that any human blood and body fluids are potentially infectious. Next, we have SDS, formerly known as MSDS, which stands for Safety Data Sheets. There are 16 categories, and every chemical used in a salon is a requirement of OSHA. The SDS or safety data sheet should be immediately available to all employees and also available to use in all emergencies. Here are the 16 categories, starting with identification. The definition, name of product, contact information for the manufacturer, distributor, recommended use and restriction on use, hazards, Identification, definition, list all hazards associated with the product, hazard classification, flammable, precautionary statements, and hazard pictograms. Composition information on ingredients, identifies the ingredients on the product, including concentrations. First aid measures, short and long-term symptoms, first aid instructions. Firefighting measures list suitable and unsuitable fire extinguishers, chemical hazards associated with fire, recommended protective equipment and precautions. 
Accidental release measures provides instructions for proper cleanup of a spill, protective equipment needed, emergency measures to follow. Handling and storage, guidelines for safe handling, storage of chemicals, including incompatible chemicals. Exposure controls, personal protection, provides recommended limits on exposure, methods to reduce exposure, PPE, which stands for personal protective equipment and proper ventilation. Physical and chemical properties contain 18 properties from color to pH to viscosity. Remember, pH stands for potential hydrogen and viscosity is the measurement, the thickness or thinness of a liquid. Stability and reactivity provides information on the environment, stability and reaction risk associated with the product. Toxicological information details of risk exposure, skin irritation and measure of toxicity. Ecological information covers the impact of the chemical on the environment. Disposal considerations list of any procedures for disposal. Transportation information provides guidelines and restrictions for safe transportation. Regulatory information includes any specific safety, health, or environmental regulations. And the 16th category is other information. Let's take a look at our SDS vocabulary, starting with the word carcinogen, next is mutagen, then combustible, then flammable. Please make sure you know the definition of these terms. Modes of transmission, we do have four of them. Let's start with the definition of transmission. Transmission is the process by which pathogens move between individuals and objects. Direct transmission involves the transmission of pathogens through touching, kissing, coughing, sneezing, and talking. Indirect transmission occurs through contact with an intermediate contaminated object, such as a razor, extractor, or an environmental surface upon which the pathogen resides. The pathogen will attempt to affect anyone who touches that surface, making them the new host. Salmonella, ringworm, and MRSA. Respiratory transmission. The particles are large, so they do not stay suspended in air for long, wearing a properly fitted mask should protect you. Airborne transmission. The particles are small and dry. They last in the air longer, allowing the pathogen to spread further. Transmission occurs when a pathogen living in our respiratory tract is expelled through coughing, sneezing, or even talking. Disinfectant labels should contain the following. The list of pathogens against which it is effective should include HIV, HPV, MRSA. If Pseudonomus aeruginosa is included, the disinfectant will kill other lesser bacteria. Our disinfectant label should also include our EPA registration number. The words bactericidal, capable of destroying bacteria, viricidal, capable of destroying viruses, fungicidal, capable of destroying fungi and mold. Mixing and changing instructions. Be sure to mix and use disinfectants according to instructions on labels so they are safe and effective. So it's really important to make sure that we do properly follow the directions on how to mix. And that is to fill the gallon water jug with water first, of course, and then adding your marvicide, barbicide, or leucocide second. If you do it the reverse way, foaming will occur and therefore our mixture will no longer be effective against any of our pathogens. Prevention 101. The first step is to eliminate pathogens through proper hand washing, cleaning, and disinfection. Clean and disinfect tools and equipment after every service. Keep your skin intact to reduce portals of entry for bacteria. Wear gloves when working with chemicals. Use lotion to reduce skin drying and cracking. Cover open wounds. Turn away clients who show signs of illness, infection. Refer them to a physician. There are five types of harmful organisms. Make sure we know the definition of the following. Bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, and biofilms. There are three ways to clean your tools and implements. First is to wash with soap and warm water, then scrubbing with a clean and properly disinfected nail brush. Second is using an ultrasonic cleaner. 
third is using a chemical cleaner. Please take a moment and test your knowledge with what you know quiz. Please answer the following questions and then your answers will follow. Please stay tuned for infection control part two.